Have you ever stained a project and had these swirl marks show up as you're staining? That can be devastating. I remember a few years ago, I was making a commission project. I had it complete. I, when I went to stain the top, I started seeing these swirl marks and I was like, what is this? How did this get here? How do I not have that happen again? Let me show you. So if you're like me, you're using these spruce or pine boards to make projects with because they're less expensive than hardwoods but they still look beautiful. Hardwoods, it doesn't really show up as much, but on these softwoods, they're so susceptible to pressure changes and the way the sandpaper is rolling and digging into them, that that's when the swirl marks really show up. Once they're on there, the only way to get rid of them, if you've already stained it, is to sand that back off and start over. And that can be very time consuming and very frustrating. What's causing these swirl marks right here is your sander. It doesn't matter if it's Festool brand. It doesn't matter if it's DeWalt brand. It doesn't matter what brand of sander you're using. If it's an orbital sander, especially a random orbital sander, you'll see these swirl marks if you do it wrong. The reason you're seeing these swirl marks is at some point while you're sanding, you're turning the sander up and the edge of that sandpaper is digging into your board. As you can see in this example, you see where I'm sanding and I get a little aggressive sometimes, especially if you have two boards coming together and you can feel that little lip. Instead of letting the sander do the work, holding it flat, moving it at about a one inch per second, and just letting the sander work, I get a little impatient and I start trying to dig it a little bit and help the sander along, putting more pressure on it. And this is where you're gonna see the major problems come in. When you start digging in with that sander, it's causing swirl marks. Especially if you hit those trouble spots and you're going side to side, you can actually even see it right here when the light hits it just right before the stain goes on, you see those swirl marks showing up in this wood. A lot of times you can't see that until you start applying stain. One of the best ways to avoid those swirls is to actually sand properly. And that's where it's all gonna, it's all starting with the foundation. What I like to do is take a pencil and draw a light line all the way over my project. That way I know where I've sanded and where I have it. Then you'll take your sander. Don't put a whole lot of pressure. Matter of fact, I'm just holding the sander. I don't have any pressure on it. Hold it flat and let the sander do the work. Kind of think about it like you're mowing grass. You don't want to leave streaks in your grass, so you're going to you're going to sand in one row, move over slightly, and then come back a second row, and it's going to take a while. That's why people hate sanding, because it takes so long. You're going to work your way up through the grit, 60 all the way to 120. I usually stop at 120. In between every grit, use a microfiber towel or some type of rag and wipe off that extra dust that come from that previous grit sandpaper. If you leave that on there, it's going to grind into your next sanding grit. After you've worked your way all the way through the grits, if you go 80, 120, or 60, 80, 120, whichever way you prefer, take your 120 or your 180 sandpaper, put it on a sanding mouse like this, and go with the grain. Not across the grain, with the grain. Do that over the entire project before you put the pre-stain on. Another important step in getting a really good finish on pine and spruce is to use pre-stain conditioner. This stuff is inexpensive, and I use it all the time. Just Make sure you get the surface well coated and then let that dry 20 or 30 minutes. Now you'll start seeing where the swirls show up. I'm gonna stain this test piece. The left side is the properly sanded side. The right side is the side where I dug in on purpose using the Festool sander. I let that stain set for about five minutes and then I wipe off any excess. On the side I sanded wrong, you see all of these swirl marks, but on the side you see where I sanded it properly, there's no swirl marks. It's a perfect finish. Speaking of wood finishes, check out outlawsboardbutter.com. Get your wood conditioner there. It is the official board butter of 731 Woodworks. You can use this board butter on your cutting boards, your charcuterie boards, your wood utensils, your wood bowls, and so much more. We sell it in these resealable four ounce tins so you can seal it up when not in use and it'll last you a long time. This board butter is so good, it should be outlawed. Head over to the store, lock yours up today. Hey, if you like this video, you want some more tips and tricks, click that box right there. Clicking that box gets you the big old virtual fist pump. Also, another one of my favorite videos right there. Thank you so much for watching.